Well, I had lots planned for today. Um, quite a lot of stuff because the uh, the older kids, my older kids, Lex and Leo, have taken my younger kids, Rex and Ginger, out for the day. Uh, they've gone to the cinema, which is brilliant because it gives me the afternoon to get on with stuff. But all the stuff I had planned was outdoor stuff. And it's been absolutely tipping it down all afternoon. It's just stopped a little bit. I was supposed to be up in the tree house, uh, cutting some uh, some sheets to go on the sides. I can't really do that. I can't have my electric power tools and extension cables out in this rain. So that's probably been canned. I was going to go for a run, which I may still do. Uh, got to take the dogs for a walk. All things that are still achievable, but I'm now going to get very wet doing it. Not quite how the day was supposed to go. Come on. Well, managed to achieve one of those things. Forgotten how out of shape I am. Uh, you know, I, um, I I try to run as often as I can. I like to get into a regime where I do it, you know, every other day or whatever it might be, particularly throughout the summer. The last few weeks I've let it slip just because I've been busy doing other things and probably a little bit lazy. Um, so it's really good to get back out, even if it is chucking it down with rain. <laughs> um, do you know, today I put a, uh, a post on, um, on Instagram of my very first ever car and it was a bright yellow VW Beetle looks like this <laughs> um, and I asked everybody what their first car was and uh, the pictures that I got back on Twitter and Instagram were just brilliant because there's some real absolute shit heaps of cars and I had plenty myself but because they were our first car we absolutely loved them didn't we we all have stories to tell about them we had some great life moments the first time we got a car because it enabled us to have a bit of freedom for lots of us for the very first time. Uh, that's certainly what it meant to me at the time. But I was also fascinated by the engineering and I was able to take it apart. I had my own thing that I could take apart and put back together and modify and kind of do what I wanted with. And that was the first time that I had that because up until that point when you're you know, a teenager you're relying on your parents who own the big things in your life. You can't really go around taking your parents car apart uh, much as I tried <laughs> um, so your car it represents your first car represents a real milestone in your life and it also kind of reminds me of um, of what a car meant to me because it was freedom it was my opportunity to get away from my parents it was an opportunity to get away from the little village where I lived which had no major sort of public transport uh, and it was to get out and see the world for the first time I could do whatever I wanted to do uh, and it's kind of forward, fast forward on a few years now and, uh, and I, I'm, you know, there's a few things going on in my life at the moment which have reminded me of, of why I love cars so much. And it kind of made me think about what my kids will think about cars. You know, my oldest daughter, she's 18, she's passed the driving test but she still doesn't have a car. Uh, and it's partly because she, she can't really afford one too much, they're expensive to run, but also because she's not that desperate to have one. Because she lives in a, a you know in a town now which does have um, public transport and, you know there's not such a reliance on having your own car anymore we've got uber she can pick up her mobile phone press a little button and like a magician a car appears out of nowhere that's what the kids of today have so the whole idea of transport and personal car ownership is changing but does it mean that we don't have to love cars does it mean that the engineering behind cars is less important. No, it absolutely doesn't. The mechanical engineering is becoming a lot simpler, particularly with electrification, but the software that runs these cars, the systems, the user experience of those cars is perhaps more important now than it ever was. Speaking of electrification, I really wanted to get out on the electric skateboard today and run into town myself. But I don't really fancy it in this weather. I think they're even cuter when they're wet. <laughs> I 
Now, there are a couple of reasons why the kids of today uh, perhaps don't have quite the desire for owning a car that we had when we were growing up. Obviously, the cost is one. Um, there is also the fact that they have this desire now for young kids and an ability to have everything kind of right now. A couple of clicks on that and your car turns up out of nowhere. If you want to order something off the internet, it'll be here tomorrow. Um, they have gaming where they can experience in pretty good quality now with great graphics, great immersive experience. They can drive whatever, the, whatever car they want, wherever they want in the virtual world. And that's changed a lot since we were all kids. There's also this idea of, of uh, you know, everything is online. So they actually have less reason to go out. It's all a sad state of affairs, but kids, you know, live in a social media world. So they don't need to go and meet up with their friends like we used to have to do to kind of hang out and communicate. They can hang out online and have a similar or a modern version of that experience. So there are lots of reasons. Public transport is better. Um, lots of reasons why they don't necessarily need to own a car as desperately as we felt that we did. But my point with all this is that if there's a, a gradual kind of um, loss of love for cars uh, with a younger generation, if they no longer desperately want to own their own car or desperately feel a need to own their own car, then along with that, does this need or this uh, passion for the engineering of cars disappear along with it. When I got my first car, as I said, it was an amazing experience. It was amazing. It was an amazing kind of route to freedom, but it was also something that I could take apart. I could put back together. I could learn how it works. I learned a huge part of what I know about cars just through tinkering with cars myself on my mum and dad's drive, taking them to bits, understanding them, looking at them, like getting my head around how the various components work and then putting them all back together again. If I could improve them, I'd make modifications to them. You know, I, I began engineering at a very young age because I could. And cars were so simple, certainly the cars that I could afford back then. My VW Beetle, I had a Mini as well. So simple, I could take it apart and put it back together and have the engine, you know, the Beetle, I could drop the engine out tinker with it, do whatever I needed to, and put it back in in the same kind of couple of hours. You know, it was so simple. It encouraged me to buy my first set of tools because that's what enabled me to start tinkering with things and playing with things and modifying things. And it, my passion for engineering undoubtedly grew out of that very first car that I owned and that I was able to take apart. So if that starts to disappear, you know, because even if kids do end up with cars of, of this more modern era, they're not uh, going to be taking them apart themselves. There's very little you can, I mean, you can barely even find the engine on a modern production car. Um, you know, when you open the bonnet, where is it? It's buried under all this, you know, cowling and, and it's hidden from view. It's not like you can get in there in the engine bay next to it and start pulling things apart and working on it. If you want to do anything to it, you need to plug a laptop in. So the internals... And the engineering, the biggest part of the engineering of a modern car, and certainly of a car of the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, is going to be software-based. Will we inspire the next generation of software engineers, perhaps through cars? And maybe that's not a bad thing. But where do the next group of mechanical engineers, automotive mechanical engineers, come from? Where do the next set of Formula One engineers, motorsport engineers in general, come from? Because I got into Formula One and, and racing through an initial love of cars in general. You know, most people are not born with a love of, uh, a love of racing or grow up with a love of, of desperately wanting to be in racing. They grow up first with a love of cars and then you learn about racing. So I wonder how all that will change. I'm not really sure where today's vlog is going. It's more about questions than any answers. Um, but, you know, it's just an interesting thought to think about, you know, my own children are almost certainly not going to follow in my footsteps in terms of uh, automotive engineering. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I wonder if you expand that to a much bigger level, where are the next group of engineers, automotive engineers gonna come from? Where are the kids gonna get that passion for taking things apart, putting them back together, working out how they work? And I'm not talking about doing that on a laptop through coding. That's a, that's a wonderful thing to be able to do, and it's a really important part of our future. You know, that's a whole different set of questions, but there's nothing wrong with that. But 
the mechanical engineering, who's going to inspire the kids to do that? Don't know the answer. <laughs> if you do, let me know. Um, just, just what are your thoughts? You know, the world's changing so rapidly, isn't it? And, um, and I just think back, it's not very long ago when I really, in, the, in terms of the world, when I bought that Beetle and I started taking cars apart, found a real genuine love for cars and what I could do for them as much as what they could do for me. Um, and it led on to some, you know, incredible moments in my life and some incredible experiences. And I was able to take that engineering skill, develop it, and end up, you know, winning Formula One World Championships. Um, you know, do we need to address this situation? Is it something that's a problem or could be a problem as, a, as you know, in the future? Uh, what do we do about it? Do we need to do anything about it? Do we just let it run its course? I don't know. <laughs> let me know. <laughs>